So after day three of the second test in Adelaide, it's time once again to ask George. Chris Sweet asks, England's Red Bull game has taken a catastrophic hit from the focus on white ball. In light of the T20 World Cup, why don't Australia appear to have fallen dramatically short, having switched? Well, there's a lot of differences, not least in the climate. So in England, for example, if you don't play uh, Red Bull cricket in the middle weeks of summer, it's drastically different to trying to squeeze it in other times of the year. I don't think that's quite the same in nearly any other country. It's a different ball as well. And I think actually the general standard of cricket generally over history in Australia has been higher. I think, I think the record shows that as well. You've got to be a bit careful with these comparisons. They're very different countries and there are some significant differences. I, I think the point that he makes though is, is right, that the focus on white ball cricket is part of the problem. Not everything, it's part of the problem. Are the ECB more bothered about a money-spinning franchise tournament than the Ashes, asks Dave. Well, they're most interested in money. They'd love to win this series. They'd love to, but they would love the money they make doing other stuff, just that little bit more. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's basically the middle and end of the problem. Uh, sorry, that's basically the start, middle and end of the problem. Uh, short-term love over cash and a long-term nurturing of the sport. The, the, the irony there is that they're going to damage this as a brand. They are. They're going to damage it as a brand and they'll damage it as a commercial entity because they're not treating it with the respect it warrants because no one's going to come and watch this tosh year upon year and no one's going to spend the vast sums on broadcast deals that they've been used to. You know, it's a very foolish organisation that treats its core product as poorly as the ECB have in recent years and it's going to come back and bite, bite them hard. Colin Menehan asks, given Milan's success, should England be picking other experienced county pros? Well, uh, who do you have in mind? I mean, um, it's not as if they haven't done quite a lot of that. Uh, people have been tried and people have been jested if they've failed. So, uh, you know, Milan, Milan is uh, one of the very few bright points of this series at this stage. And yeah, you could look around county cricket and maybe think about James Vince. Uh, maybe one or two others, but, um, you know, it, it's not as if they haven't tried quite a lot of people as top order batters, and it's not as if any of them has succeeded in the last seven or eight years. Leaf asks, was four years not long enough to build Ben Stokes and be, uh, as a BJ Watling type batter and great keeper? They surely didn't say Ben Stokes. They uh, surely uh, said should Ben Stokes. That, should, I, should I ask that again? Ben, ben. <laughs> well, I would. Oh, no, no, don't. let's carry on, because I'm absolutely sure that if Ben Stokes had four years to work on his keeping, he'd be terrific. He would, because he's brilliant. Uh, but yes, they, they should have stuck with Ben Folks. He's got a higher first-class batting average than Joss Butler. He can keep much better than Joss Butler. Um, I, I, you know, the Joss Butler thing I find um, very frustrating, because... Uh, they dropped James Vince, for example, because they said he didn't have a proof of track record of run scored at first class level, which is up to a point. I can see what they made. Well, nor does just Butler. He's never consistently scored runs with, against a red ball. I think he averages 32 or 33 at first class level. Uh, he seems to be one of the sort of favoured group. He's, you know, obviously very close with Joe Root, he's close with Ben Stokes. He seems to be given uh, more leeway than other players to fail for years, really. I mean, he's going to be one of those players that you only get in English cricket, really. Maybe you get it in Pakistan. But uh, someone like Chris Lewis, Graham Pick, Mark Rampakash, they can go through, through their whole career uh, being seen as full of potential. I mean, he's in his 30s. Anyway, uh, uh, yes, um, England happened to have a, a very, very high-class player in Ben Folks available, and they're not utilising him. Tom Vickers asks... With the added pressure of carrying the batting order, how impressive is it that Joe Root has moved into the, I think, top four of the most test runs in a year? In a year? Yeah, I mean, he's obviously had a, a fantastic year at England, rely on him very heavily. He, his batting has gone to a different level this year. Uh, the, the great shame of that is that I, I think he'll always remember it sort of bittersweet because those runs are not translated to victories, really. I mean, there were a couple at the start of the year which were memorable. But uh, what is it, 10 or 11 games now where England have won one test? I think that will always hurt him. But on an individual level, yes, he's, he's, he's batting beautifully. He's got a huge amount of time. Uh, he looks very, very high class player. 
but it hasn't amounted to a great deal. Well, I wouldn't say it hasn't amounted to a great deal because he can't do everything, you know. It is a team game. Uh, but yeah, I think it will probably smart forever that the, uh, despite everything he's done, it hasn't led to victories. I think that will always hurt him. I, I don't think he'll take such pleasure in the runs he's been scoring. Andrew Brooks asks, can you explain why England's overweight is such a problem? Is it indicative of the setups overthinking or faffing? I think it's actually a, a really simply because they were shambles. They were shambles. We were watching just before they start, Australia started this second innings. They, they go out and catch in practice on the outfield. And they, I mean, just edge after edge was flying either over the slips, bouncing in front of them, going between them. It just looked finish. So I don't think they've really got uh, an idea what they're doing. They've obviously got lots of seamers uh, because Joe Root's the only spinner in the side. Uh, they're always struggling, so they're always trying to claw their way back in the game. So there's lots of conversations. They don't have a, a formula in the way that, say, Andrew Strauss did, you know, start every session with Joe Dabson and Graham Swan. They're always sort of playing catch-up at the game, so they're always struggling. But, yeah, basically, I think this England team is a shambles. Is the, the practice issues that you, that you talked about there, are they consistent with what you've seen previous to this tour? No, I've never seen uh, England's catching as poor as this. So, for example, on the first morning, well, the first day of this game, uh, I, I was watching and, you know, you've got slip catching here, um, the ball's been hit hard over quite a short distance there, and catches in the air over there, and I saw three catches go down at the same time. They're consistent. I, honestly, I haven't seen a worse England field inside of this. Now, I know that there was a you know, some of the tours here going back more than 20 years might have been worse. But this is this is very bad. Yeah, it's really bad. They, they, honestly, they look they look a bit of a shambles. They feel these poor, catch it's poor. They're overstepping uh, instead of uh, keeping their feet behind the lines. The back it's poor. It's a shambles. How bad do Burns, Hamid, Pope and Co need to be before Bairstow is forgiven, asks Nick Williams. Well, it's not just... You know, that's interesting that you use those positions, but, you know, Bairstow was getting to the stage where he wasn't doing badly as a keeper at the time that he was, uh, that they decided to make him a specialist batter again. I mean, Bursto is one of those cases of mismanagement that will go down in the ages. The 18 months or so before they decided to tell him to do a different job, he had done his job excellent. I think he had a year or so where he scored, I don't know, he's got over a thousand runs to keep with a year, didn't he? He was averaging 60 odd. He did very well. They did. They, you know, they decided to change his role to accommodate Joss Butler. It's always Joss Butler who's accommodated. And, um, you know, it hasn't worked. All they've done is to stabilise him and they haven't got any more runs or any better keeper. So uh, he could come back in lots of positions. Uh, I, I mean, he's not a top order batter in red ball cricket. He's just not. Uh, you know, I know he does that brilliantly at white ball cricket, but it's a different game. The ball does not wobble in the same way. It really doesn't. So uh, you've got to be a bit realistic what you ask him to do. Uh, England have tried quite a lot of top order players. I, I guess that Zach Crawley is very close to a recall. And if I were England, I would seriously be thinking about, you know, James Vince is in Australia. I don't know, I'd be thinking about that. Uh, these, are, these are fairly desperate circumstances. But yeah, jo Johnny Bester, but I think Johnny Bester as either a keeper or a middle order player. Simon Stokes asks, can someone please explain why England, how England will develop quality spinners like Lyon without playing Red Bull cricket during the English summer? Well, they won't. I mean, Simon's spot on. I mean, that is, it's such an obvious point. Sorry, that's not to diminish the question. It's a good question. Uh, but it's so obvious, should be very obvious to the administrators running the game. That's going to be a problem, but they don't care. And I'm afraid all the fans of the hundred who are going, oh, England needs this competition in the middle of the season. I'm sorry, but you're partially responsible too. If you prioritise one format at the expense of others, there will be consequences. And that's what we're seeing here. It's not just about 100, obviously, it's just started. Any window where you're prioritising one is going to have a knock-on effect, and that's what's happening. And we've been talking about this with spinners for years. It's not like this has suddenly come and slapped England in the face. We're not giving them a chance to develop, and there are talented young spinners in, in, in the county game. It, it's very similar with fast bowlers as well. You know, you're seeing England continually just bowl dry, bowl dry, because they don't know what else to do, because they haven't worked out how to take wickets on flat pitches where the ball isn't doing lots. They're, they've become over-reliant on the Duke's ball, and it flatters them at home. And away from home, they're pretty ordinary, aren't they?
And finally, just as well Australia don't have their front line attack, eh? Says Lev. Well, yeah, well, I, I, absolutely right. This should have been an opportunity. And there's no way, you know, these, these bowlers, decent as they are, they're, they're not a patch on Hazelwood and Cummings. They're really not. Hmm. So it should have been a huge opportunity. But uh, you know what? England aren't very good at cricket. And that's a humdinger of a problem when your job is to play cricket. It, it's a real mess. I think this tour's, hey, it would be lovely if they stuffed these words down my throat. And I'd say in a couple of days, well, I didn't see that coming. Who would have thought they could win from there? But I think this tour's going to get real ugly. And it worries me, you know, that they're going to say, oh, Root and Silver would have to go. You've got to be looking further up the picking order. They've got no chance. They've got no chance with the resources they're given. You know, how, what are they going to do? There, there aren't the spinners. There aren't the fast bowlers. There aren't the top order batters. And the problem for that is the domestic structure, largely, the prioritisation of white ball cricket and the terrible pitches that have been allowed to dominate at county level. And everyone knows this who's been watching it. And Tom Harrison has sat there with his big fat bonus and done sod all about it. So that's where you should be looking. You know this already. And will anything change? I don't know. I hope that England cricket supporters are righteously indignant and angry, but I fear the sensible ones will just think, ah, well, and they'll turn off and have a good night's sleep. Would it be a good thing if it was a whitewash? I, no, well, I, I'm never going to think that, am I? I I'm never going to think that. It, it's always going to hurt. perspective of change and stuff. Oh, I don't, no, because I'm not sure anything will change. It's like, I've seen whitewashes here before. What changed? All they're interested in is money. Honestly, I think it's the top of the ECB you've got to be looking. All those people on the ECB board, what are you doing? I mean, honestly, what are they doing? They're absolute waste of space. They, they showed themselves morally bankrupt and they didn't go to Pakistan. So, uh, do I have any faith that even a 5 nil? no, will change things? I don't, actually. I think if you want to change things, you've got to do it yourself. But I think everyone watching this, if they agree at all, should join the Cricket Supporters Association. The only way things ever change is if you make them change. They're not going to listen. They're going to take their big fat bonuses, sort of from Tara and Monte Carlo. 